Oh, well, how was Europe? How's Phil be back? Uh, it was good. Uh, we um, played, I think, 15, 15 shows. Mm -hmm. and, uh, glad it's over, I was, but I was happy when it was going on. Yeah. Did you, did you link up with any uh, familiar faces over there? Um, yeah, that, that happens. People from the past come out of the woodwork. Actually, a guy introduced, actually introduced me to Mouthless in college, or I got a ride with this guy, Ken, to see The Cure Okay. when I was a sophomore in college, and he was giving Steve a ride. They were both, no, I was a freshman, and they were both sophomores. Oh, okay. And, uh, he came out of the woodwork in Berlin, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it's funny, most of, most of the, you know, after the shows, I, I meet a lot of people, and stand around, it's very hard for me to recognize when someone comes up to me, even if I know them. Right. Um, and it takes a second. It's kind of, it's always embarrassing for me because I go, don't you know who this is? Yeah, yeah. And I'm looking and they're traveling so much and moving around so fast. I'm never sure, and, you know, like, oftentimes it'll be like someone whose face I really know so well. It's because I had an interview with them two weeks before, but right. in, in another country, you know, and it's just impossible for me to it blurs together after a while, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. But it's all, it's out of almost ha trying to um, have, you know, to really pay attention. Right. How's, how's, the, uh, how's the lookout material faring with the uh, Jews audience thus far? Good. I, it was, uh, um, I wasn't sure at first, but mm -hmm. um, what you're supposed to do uh, when you tour a new album um knowing uh no one had heard the music but um i did it for every night i just played every other song right and um the people were seemed to be the reaction was just as loud that's what people kept saying was just as sort of loud and enthusiastic right i don't know if that's a function of the fans of being if you're into a band like silver jews you're naturally will be interested instead of put off mm -hmm. by uh, what's next or I don't know, but um, or just from downloading or mm -hmm. whatever. But it just they really felt the same. They felt like they were as, of, as good or of the same, definitely from the same place. Right on. Now your uh, your touring lineup is uh, is uh, you're using the same uh, members that you've recorded with, and you also toured with on Tanglewood to an extent, right? Yeah. Is, uh, is all that uh, pretty uh, kosher at this point? Yeah. Um, I mean, I wouldn't change a thing uh, for between now and the rest of the shows, which are in September. Um, right. And I've never had another live band, so I probably, um, I can't, I don't know that I'm going to be running through a lot of live bands. Yeah. I don't even know if I really will be making more records or anything after this fall, so. Okay. Um, I don't want to say uh, whether I use them or not I, I don't know but it sure is you know the, they're all friends and they all um, it's, it's different for someone like me because I don't have I don't employ somebody for a, a, a whole job it's not like other bands mm -hmm. uh, where that's their main main thing I only really need that help uh, a couple weeks a year right right now uh, fans of uh, Tanglewood uh, might say that there was a certain uh, dark undercurrent to it, and uh, I don't necessarily feel that way about Lookout. Um, were you coming from a different place in terms of songwriting and lyricism when you were putting this material together? Well, I think uh, the, probably the, the biggest change of place would be uh, having gone on tour. Um, this would be the, the first album I'd written after really hearing applause, after getting feedback, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And so I think that, in a way, it's kind of like I it gave me sort of a recalibration, okay, and like re sort of reset my aim, um, and made me feel a lot clearer about um, communicating my job. Like it's unclear sometimes, you know, how much what you're doing is demonstrative and how much communicated. Okay. Intentionally. So, um, from, uh, I definitely on this album was able to sort of remove myself, um, and that may be from, from going out and sort of becoming conscious of, of the songs that I've written so far 
and having and playing so many of these these songs, I think that you, the tendency would be to write away from what I've done before, and so mm-hmm. um, I'm probably more conscious than ever of um, the burdens of uh, the, the, the confusion between the songwriter and the narrator and songs. Right. I'm a, I'm a big fan of your uh, lyricism in general, and I was wondering if you might shed some light on a few of my favorite cuts from Lookout. Um, uh, Suffering Jukebox, for example. Well, um, that, like a lot of songs, started out as a title. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's, kind of, it's, it's not unusual for me to be playing with the ideas or mixing the ideas um, about psychology and uh, and country music. Mm-hmm. You know, where those things cross, and I think when you know it's, a, it's definitely a little bit of a, a jab or a critique at Nashville, but in a way I was really thinking of Dallas too. Okay. But um, in Nashville, I really I love Nashville, so it's an affectionate critique. But right. Um, and Nashville is so verbally abused. It, it's almost it's almost a pejorative, you know, in certain cases so right um that's something be natural so um i'm certainly not piling on sure but um it's more of a it's a different uh critic critique from more of a sort of a, the at least in the first couple of lines from a socioeconomic point of view um, mm-hmm. and i'm thinking i think of uh you know i keep alive the the story of an actual jukebox anthropomorphized but also parallel to it, the idea of of uh, one of the guys who plays in the honky tonks on Lower Broad, um, who you know plays classic country and classic hits, uh, who play for tips down there, who are amazing musicians, but who are also stuck where they are. Right, and, right. Uh, nobody really wants to hear their own songs. Exactly. Um, so I, you know, I go down to those places and watch the bands and sort of marvel at the skill of these guys, They're some of the best players in the world. They live in Nashville. Mm-hmm. But there's not necess- there's not a, rec- a use for all those guys on records. There's, right. there's a small group of people and so um, there's these, you know, amazingly talented people who are sort of managing restaurants or right. whatever. There's a lot of different uh, stories uh, in Nashville about um, you meet people at different stages in their career, and some very down, very low. Right. And uh, you catch some of those stories, and so I think that that was my way of sort of putting in a little bit of that um, perspective. Excellent. How about uh, Candy Jail? Candy Jail um, was a chorus, and that's all it was for a long time. And I actually thought of it on this this one night and I called up and I left it on the answering machine of uh, my friend Mark Nevers mm-hmm. and he was recording a record by um, David Kilgore mm-hmm. and uh, he was I guess they had gone out to eat and they come back and Mark played the message machine and David Kilgore said oh that was really good who was that, that I really liked that mm-hmm. and so I was compliment, you know I was complimented that and unlike most touring musicians, I don't really meet musicians or who like the music I've done, or I very rarely have ever heard of or, you know, Jay Mascus always says the nice things, but for the most part, we've never been that kind of band that, like, bigger bands cover or name drop. Okay. Um, and so uh, I was really pleased to remember when David Kilgore was, was into that. And so I, I kept it in my back pocket and... Um, in writing the album, I was trying to write different kinds of songs, mm-hmm. and um, you know, and uh, like the songs have uh, more than one aim. So I don't like to always say one, but one, for instance, would be that song, which is also a kind of a critique of um, the culture we live in. Uh, in other ways, it's um, about uh, a friend of mine, Jeremy, and mm-hmm. in some other ways, it's about uh, some family members of mine, and um, it has 
you know, it works on many different levels. And, you know, the, you know there's some of the songs, like, for instance, have footnotes. So, but I don't put them in the record. I just sort of sent them out in the critical package mm -hmm. for the press. Right. And obviously that's because I don't want the readings to have to depend on anything like that. But, you know, it's... It's also, it has quotes uh, woven into it, a Roger Miller quote, country and restroom, mm -hmm. sort of a, a remark that he used to make, and um, I quote Merle Haggard, uh, branded man, uh, a lot of the songs, and make plan words on brands, and, you know, the song sat around for a lot, so long I was able to sort of make the songs multi, you know, applicable to different sorts of needs I had to write different kinds of songs. Even, right. the, even the kind of classic sort of kind of numb-headed move of uh, country musicians when they do their Mexico song, of which, you know, Kenny Chesney was make, making a career out of. But it used to be mm -hmm. that he did a Mexico song, and that was, you know, Mexico was the metaphor for, you know, escape. Mm -hmm. or your island song or whatever. Right. So, you know, I'm definitely thinking about all those things at once. Right on. Now, my favorite uh, would have to be uh, San Francisco, B.C. Yeah. I love the story that tells, uh, where were you coming from there? Well, um, that was a case where a song where I, I wanted there to be a narrative, and I wanted it, I already had the title in the first line and mm -hmm. the idea of the song, but when I wanted to talk about old San Francisco, I wanted to talk about different eras. Right. In some ways, I was thinking about uh, 1977 San Francisco, and in some ways, I was thinking about uh, the um, Barbary Coast San Francisco or the Gold Rush San Francisco mm -hmm. or the sort of SDS early 70s San Francisco State uh, PC and I and I guess that I, what I wanted to do was sort of incorporate all the chaos of all those kind of times together and even the BC sort of made me think of the earthquake mm -hmm. um, and and so um, I I guess like I was trying to make the the music sort of change it sort of just kind of Huey Lewis at the end with the keyboards and uh, you know I, I've never I have friends who live in San Francisco I've visited San Francisco a bunch of times I don't know that much about it mm -hmm. but you know pretty common storyline that people know is that San Francisco sort of gentrified the artist out mm -hmm. um, and um, so you know in, in songs like Candy Jail and, and then in Saint Victory I'm also kind of critiquing this idea of, you know, filtering out, making everything luxurious, everything perfect, everything, all the boys handsome, and all the, you know, food tastes good, and all the you know, Victorians refurbished, and, you know, um, the sort of madness uh, spending the wealth and the, the sort of reinvestment of wealth in wealth and in appearances and stuff. Right. Um, so I knew that I had like a a problem or something a problem to play with you know, mm -hmm. culturally and that it was to sort of describe and the way people always describe their past is like when it used to be the way it used to be you know and uh, so with San Francisco there would be nostalgia for a more law, a more lawless time right that's excellent now would you um if somebody comes up and asks, would you consider yourself a poet or a musician? Um, well, I think that the only reason or the, my excuse for being, for doing this kind of work is that I'm neither. And that uh, I think if I, I think that by resisting membership in those categories, mm -hmm. um, I've been able to uh, do this project. Right, uh, and I think if you change any of that, like put me, make me a touring musician, mm -hmm. um, or um, or leave me up in the ivory tower, 
you know, in the rock clubs or in the ivory tower, I was, you know, I was, I had no future, so, um, I don't have any power in the poetry world, I don't have colleagues in the music world, I don't have a lot of bands that I've opened up with, I've never opened up for somebody, you know, I don't have favors and um, alliances and mm -hmm. these sort of things, so that's important to me, um, just for my self-image to mm -hmm. continue to work, um, that I kind of remain an outsider, just because that, that's, that's all I know, that's like the stance that... I was sort of born into feeling that way as like just even basically down to when you're a kid and you realize you're left-handed or mm -hmm. that you're Jewish and no one else is or mm -hmm. you're not from the region. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so in all other things in life, it seems I resist groups. And so I was always able to sort of, I at the time, you know, people in the poetry world, uh, when I was more in it, um, didn't really take me seriously as a poet, um, and vice versa in the music world. Mm. And so, um, every both both uh, art worlds assume that you're um, interloper from the other. Okay. And so that worked out for me, even though it was somewhat lonely. Okay. And do you have any plans to release any uh, anything related to actual air in the future? Any kind of books down the line? Yeah, there's uh, uh, that's a lot of what I'm going to be doing, definitely. Um, so when you said earlier that maybe you're not releasing albums for a while, you're going to focus on uh, writing? Uh, that's a definitely seems like all signs point to that being a wise thing to do. Okay. You just got a. Do you have? Do you have a? Have you just been working on stuff that's kind of piling up, or are you just feeling that that's the uh, direction well, you need to go in? It's it's the feeling I've gotten from a feeling of completeness about sort of doing the Silver Juice mm -hmm. and um, the touring, which was really good, and I think sort of helped me write and definitely helped me write this album. Um, and it's definitely something. It's fun. I like to do it. I don't think it's necessarily good for me. Okay. Um, as an artist. So when I say, you know, it seems like the wise thing to do um, to withdraw from the sort of this, this entertainment uh, complex, every everything is sort of connected into and interconnected. Well, um, it's very hard to see the divisions between things and um, to know. It's very hard. It's very hard to say you're really outside of it mm -hmm. um, and that you're autonomous. And so as time goes on, I. I start to have more and more doubt that bands that I, that as I see bands that they are really autonomous artists, mm -hmm. um, and so I'm afraid of that happening to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm sort of, I'm at this point sort of cautiously. There's, that, there's no warning, you know. There's no precedence for all of this stuff. The internet. Mm -hmm. and, um, it seems to me like I'm a cautious person and. Um, as long as there's so much depend, it's sort of like it's, it's more like making movies, you know, being in a band. It's, it's okay. dependent on so many different people. It's not right. the sort of mission that I, I it was not what I looked into. I mean, I sort of I feel like a priest who won the lottery or something. It's really great and everything, but mm -hmm. you know, I have to go back. Right. So if if you could sit down with any one writer, dead or alive, pick their brain, who would it be? Well, I would have to say Cormac McCarthy, just because. Uh, and but at the same time, one thing I respect about him is that he doesn't do interviews. That he's, uh, you just get the books. Okay. Uh, and I'd actually probably really like to talk to him about that, about how 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 that has protected him, and, mm -hmm. um, and you know, sort of how how living in the way he lives and his isolation. Right. That he lives in. Uh, I'm curious about that. Now, uh, how about how about a musician? Same question. Um, uh, let's see. I I would say um, it would have to be somebody who was writing something interesting to me now. So, mm -hmm. like in other words, I'm. I'm not like really into like if Neil Young was in the next room, I don't necessarily think that I'd really want to go to the trouble of meeting him. Uh -huh. 
Um, Somebody more contemporary. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I guess, you know, it's funny. Jack White lives in Nashville, and I heard that every once in a while I hear a story about him from around town that, like, they, you know, he'll sort of, he'll sort of be, like, harsh or strict. Mm-hmm. Or you hear sort of, and to me that seems kind of old-fashioned. Everyone's sort of nice in the music industry now. Mm-hmm. But whenever I hear a story about him being a dick or something like that, I'm uh-huh. really interested. I'm sort of like, hey, you know what? This is really kind of classic. Uh-huh. Back when the artists used to be assholes. All right, all right. You are Nashville-based, um, and does representing Nashville mean something uh, special to you? Um, well, it's kind of like representing Judaism, like the. They don't know that I'm representing it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can have, uh, I do have my, uh, I am the, like a lot of times the only person, uh, only music that people probably listen to from Nashville if they're not country music listeners. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so I'm aware of that. Uh, and it's part of the music. And I love Nashville. I also am aware, and Nashville's aware of its corniness. Mm-hmm. And um, so, for me, that's something positive to align myself with because it's it's uncool, and it's something that I tend to do in certain certain cases. Embrace the uh, the wrong thing, mm-hmm. you know, the opposite thing, or the wrong thing to do. As mm-hmm. long as it's 180 degrees, right? You know, not just a little bit wrong. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, David, I appreciate you taking a few minutes today and uh, chatting my ear a bit. All righty. And uh, I love the album. I'm going to go spin some right now on my radio program. So thanks a lot, man. Thank you very, very much. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, we'll be up there in Northern California probably in late September. Oh, is that right? You guys coming to uh, the Bay Area or Sacramento? We're going to come to San Francisco and uh, and there's and Big Sur. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I'll see you then. All right. Take Bye. it easy, David. Thank you. Bye.